good. All right. I Ooh. did as I was told. So God, well, while weird. they're doing that, I have a short discussion challenge. Whoops. Someone has said for a twenty-five dollar donation, they would love to have Matt and Graham Matt. and anyone else yeah. uh, discuss their opinions of Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Hey. I've been waiting Ooh. since the first episode to make this challenge. I I admit uh, that like most television. Uh, I'm way behind on Strange New World. There's I'm lots of way behind. I have mm -hmm. so much in the hopper. You would think, you know, like, you haven't been doing anything for like the last several months. I've been working more than I should have, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But also, just haven't really like, had the friggin' spoons for like, cause it's mm -hmm. like, I wanna watch, when I, when there's TV, we were talking about this the other day actually. Yeah. When I want, when I watch TV, I want to watch TV, and I've not had the energy to watch TV. Mm -hmm. Isn't that stupid? So I've just been, I've been, I've been absorbing a lot of YouTube nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I have watched the first four or five episodes of Strange New Worlds, and it rules. It, yeah. It's really good. It's Absolutely so good. slaps. It's, it's so, really good. It's so good that I feel confident sleeping on it a bit because I know I can come back and enjoy it. Yeah. 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 The the thing I really really like so. It feels like Star Trek. It feels like Star Trek, but it feels like Star Trek for a particular reason, yeah. and it's because they're playing the hits. And yeah. it, it like it's actually really fascinating to see a show come in and just be like, we're gonna make every episode this season mm -hmm. a classic Star Trek plot with mm -hmm. a new twist on it. Yeah. And great, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's Do so that. good. Like yeah. what a yeah. concept. Yeah. <laughs> we we figured out that if we want to make Star Trek and we want to make it good, we just remake Star Trek yeah. and we make it good. <laughs> well, and it has some of the like visuals that I really liked of the vibe from the J.J. Abrams movies visually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but is instead written in that way. Yeah, which is wonderful. Yeah, they they've pulled on like all the best parts yeah. of the like the the kelvin universe yep. and on the thing the lessons they've learned from discovery as well and uh they've created this sort of like synthesis version yeah. of star trek that's just really good like for for me personally best since ds9 <laughs> i yep. i'm really split because yeah. i love lower decks oh I love yeah, lower yeah. Decks Ooh, lower decks is surprisingly good. I, I, <laughs> I haven't gotten into lower decks so oh. maybe that's part of it I tried the first episode and kind of bounced a you little. You should go back to oh, it yes. because the first episode is not really indicative of what they're doing with the series. Okay. Um, the first episode is like a good sense of like the tone they set, okay. but they're like the show is doing like character arcs and like okay. seasons that, have that did have, not come like, across in episode one. Uh, when I started watching Lower Decks, I was like, oh, somebody at Paramount watched Rick and Morty and yes. thought yeah. that this would be a funny idea. Yeah. And that's okay. what episode one. And that's episode played, one. They plays yeah. that. Yeah. It's like, oh, um, hey, did you like this? Turns out, yeah, Lower Decks is great. Yeah. <laughs> you basically, surprised. like, everybody who's like, oh, I bounced off the first episode, I'm like, watch the second episode. <laughs> the, 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 specifically, uh, Andrew, because of the absolutely pitch perfect Deep Space Nine tribute episode. Oh my did. god, it was so good! Mm. <laughs> okay. What I, what I like also is that, um, so apparent, apparently, uh, Lower the cast of Lower Decks are going to appear mm -hmm. on an episode of Strange New Worlds. Yeah, which is perfect because the whole time yeah. I've been thinking, I looked at the at the voice cast and I was like, they could play these characters in real life. They should definitely do that at some point. And then they announced that they were going to. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, that can totally work because like Riker is canonically like like appears in Lower Decks, but much sillier than Riker would ever be. Mm -hmm. But that's just because Lower Decks is silly. Mm -hmm. But you could take these goofball characters and put them in a more serious show and just have them be a little more serious. They would still work. But it yeah. still right? plays, it's great. It plays with all the rules of Trek, though. Like, yeah. It, no, nothing feels out of place. Nothing feels like it's, oh, this is universe breaking. This It's, it's an in-canon animated comedy Star Trek show. Yeah. And it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, oh it's my God. like, I don't what? know. My favorite part about it is, sorry, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna pull the conversation back just because one person in chat, Jay Nerd In, 
says, I enjoyed Star Trek because it was so hopeful about humanity and their future. Nowadays, mm. I feel like Star Trek is cynical and embarrassed about how hopeful it was. Yeah. That's why Strange New Worlds and Lower Decks both work. Yeah. Because Strange New Worlds is back to being the like hopeful about the future. Um, and Lower Decks is also like really upbeat and about how like Starfleet has a place for these outcasts and they still have the opportunity for personal growth and contribution and finding their place in the galaxy. Um, like they both fit that same mold really, really well. Um, Discovery has also over the course of its life yeah. reoriented into that, like they've course corrected, um, but there's a long walk to get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Discovery's on a journey. And, and Picard, I defended Picard in the first season for being an examination of what mm. it means to be a member of something like Starfleet yeah. in 2022, which yeah. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got through half of the first season of Picard. Yeah, it, it, and it didn't succeed in its mission. Of I, I have watched it, both seasons of Picard, and I didn't it's, like it's it not good. I'm halfway through season two. I enjoyed season one, but I went into it expecting very much not Star Trek. And, like, uh, Captain Picard and a bunch of other people go on not Star Trek-y sci-fi adventures was kind of what I was expecting, so I wasn't as bothered by it. But I do agree that it missed the mark on what it was trying to do. I just got some enjoyment out of it anyways. Yeah. And there were certain things like um, the, the Hugh reappearing with the same actor that I would just That like, was amazing. It's nice I loved, I loved that. But yeah. like, I had stopped at the end of episode five where a thing happens in a sick bay. And I was like, I hate this. Yeah. I don't, I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy <laughs> watching this show. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, going back to the, the premise of the series, Yeah. Uh, you have to suspend a huge amount of disbelief yeah. that the same Starfleet that was on board for the events of The Measure of a Man just decided, also, we'll just create an android slave race. That'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa, hold, yeah. wait a minute. hold up. Hang on. Hold up. <laughs> I have yeah. so many questions. Yeah. I, I, I know you yeah. didn't read my mission reports. That's why I made a television series about it for you to watch. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that moment that you had is what I had in season two, uh, where it was just heading too much into one particular aspect of the storyline and I realized, oh, it's going to be mostly this, huh? I don't want to watch that. <laughs> yeah. I'm already living in a world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally every time they make just, a decision on Captain Todd and Picard, I, I hate that decision. <laughs> like, I would have done this any the other opposite way. way or any way other than this. <laughs> But that's okay. We can still have a few bad shows because we still have more good We've shows coming. We've got so many good shows right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Andor later, I'm sure. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I have to catch up. Yes, Me do. too. I do too. I, every, everything I see from people whose opinions I deeply respect is like, it's so good. Yeah. Which, I, I'm Andor? On Andor. Andor. I'm on like yeah, episode, that's on my list. So like, I've seen two episodes, I think. Yeah, I'm up to episode I'm, six, but... Uh, I even made a big deal about like being like done done with Star Wars and just being like no this universe is dead to me there's nothing left that I care about anytime I've tried to get back into it it absolutely does not work I had a very and then Andor started coming out I, I have a very everyone. related thought about that because Andor is so good that I feel it's go it was an accident and they're going to ruin <laughs> it when they try to do it again next season you're 100% right I'd like it might just be that Tony Gilroy's great though yeah. is, is Andor is Andor over now like are they done the season no there's no. still two episodes or three episodes yeah. okay so they're, so they're still time for Darth Vader to show up. Yes. Uh, yes. My favorite. Oh, I came very close to swearing on camera there. I saved the, it. Uh, there was an interview on some late night talk show with Diego Luna talking about b being a Star Wars fan when he was younger yeah. and how uh, the, tr the localization for R2-D2 was Arturito. Yes. <laughs> it was not like... It was not like a literal translation of R numeral two, letter D right. numeral two, right? It was Arturito, which means little Arthur. And so, <laughs> like, Spanish speakers were like, thought the character's name was little Arthur, and I love it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, his name is little Arthur. Like, oh, look at him. Yeah. Look at him puttering around. 
I mean, it's a, a sword, great name. A sword does come out at some point. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> Whoever withdraws the saber from Arturito shall be crowned <laughs> king of the Jedi's. I don't know how this works. Yeah. I don't. Are Jedi's a monarchy? No, they're like a. Uh, oh. um, uh, they're corporate. Th- theocracy. A monk. theocracy. No, they're not even a theocracy because they're not government. Okay. Um, but they're they're like a like a um, what's the word for men of the cloth? Uh, Monks. Oh, priests. It's ecumenical it's a society. Ecumenical. <laughs> Clergy. Clergy. Clergy is what oh, I was okay. thinking. They're like they're basic. They're they're monastic is a word. But yes, they are uh, cult. <laughs> Well, well. <laughs> yeah, government-employed warrior monks. To be monks. fair, mm-hmm. 